Welcome back everyone, this is Mr. Brain, your friendly neighborhood gaming dad, here with another video. And it's been a long time coming since I've taken the opportunity to actually talk about these. And while I'm not going to go as in-depth with them as I would like, um, I feel like I just need to rip off the band-aid at this point. And today we're going to start a series on talent trees. Talent trees are already a mess to try and understand. So, I'm going to make the next three videos about just understanding the different types of talent trees. And this one is going to be primarily on the blue talent trees. Now, for the blue talent trees, we have defense, we have skills, we have support, we have field battle, and we have attack. Each of them does a certain a particular thing on the battlefield and none of them are troop specific they are geared towards your style of play more than the troop type that you use now granted there are certain types of trees that stick with certain troop types more than others for example defense being more oriented towards infantry however that's not universal in any way that being said let's start with the defense talent tree the defense tree is entirely based around surviving. That's all it does. It has no other function than that. While the they do have squad buffs for HP, defense, attack, all of your standard minor nodes, the major nodes are all about reducing damage or increasing defense in certain ways. Save for Wild Rage, which gives you 8 rage when attacked. And I'll go over that a little bit later. First, we have squads gain 1.6 time hero percentage increase in defense when they enter battle. When you have six stars, your hero rank is the amount of stars. So six times 1.6 is a 9.6% increase to defense when you enter battle. That is all the time. As soon as you enter a fight, you have an almost 10% increase in defense. Reduces squad's damage taken by 6%, but reduces damage dealt by 4%. This is also a mandatory one. If you're reducing the damage you take by more than the damage you deal, not only are you staying on the field longer, but you're getting better trades. It's going to make for slower fights. Suck it up. This is a bit iffy for a lot of people, primarily because there's actually a better one on the infantry tree. But... Squads have a 10% chance to reduce all damage taken by 15% for the next 2 seconds when using basic attacks. This means 1 in 10 chance of a 2 second damage reduction buff. Personally, I love it. Anytime you can get this to work in your favor and there's no timer on it, I would take this one if you have the points for it. Yes, this does stack with the infantry one, so you can have a reduction of 20% on top of the 15%. Personally, I take both just to survive longer. This one, you're going to end up picking it up anyway. Squad skill damage taken by 10%. A really nice buff there. Squads gain 8 rage when attacked. Notice how a lot of these other ones, when using basic attacks, when dealing damage or whatever, this says when you're attacked. That means you gain a 8 rage every time your squad is attacked. Whether it be by one enemy, by five, or by ten, you gain rage when you're attacked. So it means you do a little bit better on rage when you're swarm. So if you're trying to figure out exact rage calculations, factor that in. This one, it's a toss-up. I believe the heal factor when maxed out puts it around uh, 600, if I'm not mistaken which is far less than a, a round of combat, even when using multiple skills. Since you'd use it twice, you could count on about a 1200 heal factor. It's minor. It can help. If you don't have, po if you have the points and don't have anywhere else to put them, sure, take it. Um, Hang Tough has been a hit and miss one for me. For one reason and one reason only. This squad size reduced to 30%. It does activate whenever your squad size is reduced to 30%. This includes on garrison. However, if you get the 30% on the field, 
then you should be running home. And I don't care how strong you are. If you're at 30%, you should be going home. Um, just because you're going to you're going to lose out on trades so much at that point. So, yes, you can get an additional 24 rage from using basic attacks when your squad size is that low, but I would only use this in a garrison situation. Anyways, that's the defense tree. Let's go to actually we'll start with save the best for last. Go into support. Support is a hodgepodge. It's just a mess of stuff that does a lot of different things. None of it very offensive. So, let's take a look. First, hate rage when using basic attacks. Just like we said earlier, this only applies to when you're attacking something, not when you're getting attacked. This is a nice reduction in skill damage, 10%. Healing effect on squads by 10%. Sadly, you have to take this one for support because the other ones past it are decent. Because, but the healing effect really only works on teams that can heal or can be healed. Granted, this does also affect healing given to you by other squads. It's only 10%, but I guess it can help. This is the most busted one. If you have the support tree on a commander, you should be getting this one first. Gain 90 rage after using a skill. This applies to both skills. So you're getting 180 rage per cycle just maxing this one out. And when you put it on top of this, it means you've cut off over two seconds of time from your skill cycle just by picking this up. The last two, squad travel speed increases by 60% for 10 seconds after leaving ability. This is handy when you're hopping between buildings that are close together to get yourself in and out of fights. This one, when squads take skill damage, they have percent chance to reduce the skill damage taken by 15 percent for the next three seconds this does apply to aoe damage and it does while it doesn't stack there's also no timer on it so as soon as it takes skill damage if they take another one it will, can reset this three second timer it's a very handy survivability skill if you use a support hero up front this is uh, this is a support commander's skill after using a skill, reduces the travel speed of enemies within a circular area by 4%. Uh, I believe it's by 24% by the end of it, and it lasts 3 seconds and affects up to 5 targets. And so it does apply on both skills. So if you're trying to, if you are a weaker player and you want to find a way to help out your team, having this does help. 24% by 3 seconds can really prevent someone from being able to run away especially if it's a group of people that are trying to run away. So, but if you're stronger and you want to focus on dealing damage, these points can be used elsewhere. On to probably my most hated one, because I want to get this out of the way. The attack tree. The attack tree, while focused on offense, does not do its job well. Let's just get that out of the way first. There are a couple of really good talents here. But you could almost avoid this tree entirely and be just fine. The ones that really work for you. Increasing squad's basic attack damage by 8%, but reducing rage skill damage by 4%. This is not good on any hero that is designed to do damage but with their skills. But you need to pick it up in order to pick up this one. Increasing damage when using basic attacks by up to 15%. On top of the 8% you already get, makes each round in combat deal enough damage that the lack of rage skill damage is offset. So you're getting, what, a 23% increase to basic attack damage at a cost of 4% for rage skill damage. It is a fair trade, I promise. It's just annoying to look at. This one is a no-brainer. Um, this comes up to 1.6% just like the defense one in the defense tree. So you have a 9.6% increase to attack power when you enter battle. Down here, increases squad counter damage by 2%, I think, total. Uh, when maxed out, 2% is not a lot. Commanders that have counter damage deal counter damage. 2% is not going to change that. Uh, squads gain... 8 rage when attacked. This is a nice rage skill. 
However, the commanders that use the attack tree are so squishy they cannot survive being sworn. So having it when attacked is ludicrous to me. Here you've got when squad defeats another commander squad, except garrison. Increases attack by, I want to say it's 6% for the next 10 seconds. This, it's not a substantial increase to attack power. So it's not going to last long enough for you to kill something else. And it's only when you defeat a squad yourself. So it, it's, it's just not great. The effect disappears when your squad leaves battle, meaning you lose that 6% if you don't manage to hit somebody else within like three seconds after that combat is over. Or if someone's not already actively hitting you. And this is honestly, there's only one commander I can think of that can use this effectively. Squads have a 10% chance to, increase, to enter Berserk State when using basic attacks. Damage increases by 12% for 3 seconds, but you're effectively silenced for those 3 seconds. The only commander I can think of that can use it is John Carey, who actually increases his skill damage the longer he holds on to his rage. However, you're holding on to rage. It's, it's just, especially when he's designed to have his skill go off sooner to cut off Thunder's healing. So, just all in all, this whole talent tree is a mess of grows. It really is. On to one of the more useful trees is the field battle tree. The reason I say it's more useful is because it can be used in a lot of mini games in this game. Water War, Bounty Ground, Archipelago Raid can all use commanders that uh, use the field battle tree because it's centered around speed. You have a lot of speed increase buffs in these nodes as well as here a 12% increase to squad travel speed. A squad counter damage increase of 2%. We talked about this earlier. It's not a lot but you're running so you're only dealing counter damage. When squads are attacked by skills, increases their travel speed by 16% for 5 seconds. So, if they do get hit by a skill, they run faster to try and get out of the way. Uh, travel speed increases by 15% for 10 seconds after leaving battle. If you weren't fast enough, as soon as you leave a fight, you're t that much faster for 10 seconds. Squads have, a, I believe, a 30% chance to be immune to the slow effect inflicted by the enemy. This does help. 30% may not seem like a lot, but there's a lot of heroes out there that can inflict slow, and there's a talent tree with a skill with a talent designed to inflict it. If you can avoid being slowed while being fast, it helps. Reducing skill damage by 10% always good. And then you've got when not in battle, squad travel speed increases by 12%, but while in battle, squad travel speed reduces by 12%. So it's a 24% swing, depending on whether you're in battle or not. If you have a team that you know can effectively get out of range, use it. And there's a lot of ways you can trick the system into avoiding combat for just long enough, whether it be bouncing between nodes on the map. It's very easy to get enough distance hopping between nodes to leave combat, and then you're that much faster. Plus, that 12% helps get you to your target faster as well. So, Field Battle Tree, wonderful tree for speed users. If you're going to be using a team just designed to get where it's going, kill something and get out, like gather, uh, like farm killers, or in Bounty Ground, you can use it to get to the mercenaries faster, get to the items faster, get away from fights faster. And of course, water war. Carrying water doesn't really impede you if you're this fast. So, that being said, we've got one last tree, and it's arguably the best one, and that is the skill tree. The skill tree is, as you may have guessed, designed to deal skill damage. And that is the most damage that you can do in this game. Yes, there are commanders that can buff their basic attack damage by an insane amount. Elena, I'm looking at you. But skill damage is where it's at a lot of the time. Because it overpowers 
even healing builds if done proper. So let's take a look at this one. It's got a lot of its standard nodes here, but eight rage when using basic attacks, chances are you're just going to be dealing the attacks yourself. Here is raging fire. This is 60 rage when using a skill. It is not the support trees busted one, but on top of the eight that you get here, you can easily get about 150 rage without without really even trying. I believe if I do the math right now, it's 120 from using two skills, and within the first five seconds, you've got 160 rage. If you can get rage from other sources, such as this over here, you can easily knock off the two seconds that you want to knock off. So, keep that in mind. This is a toss-up. If you know you're going to be dealing doing rallies against enemies that don't have skill damage, such as, like, Thunder Tom. Yes, Tom doesn't really have a lot of skill damage. Or against enemies that you know aren't going to deal as much skill damage as you are. This is a great buff. Because you're going to deal more damage. And since they're already dealing less damage than you, this 6% buff isn't going to help them as much as the 6% will help you. If you've got other options, or if you're worried about this being too deadly for you, you can always put the points somewhere else. Six points, it's nice. This is just a flat 8% increase to skill damage. Who doesn't love that? This is an increase of 7.5% to skill damage for six seconds after using a skill. It, that means if you can get this six seconds to be your skill cycle, this 7.5% is constant after the first round. And there's a lot of pairs that can get down to six seconds. So keep that in mind. This can be constant if you play your cards right. Reduces squad skill damage taken by 6%. Nice flat decrease. Can't go wrong there. This is really nice. Despite what it sounds like. First of all, it's a 10% chance. No one really likes chances. However, chances can work against you or in your favor. And you notice when it works in your favor. Squads have a 10% chance to gain 120 rage when using basic attacks. If you're going to do the math, try and figure out the consistent amount, I would just say 12 rage per second. However, just know that if you can keep your skill cycle within 120 to get another second or two off, that it's going to cut that skill cycle down by a full second, maybe two, depending on where you have it. For example, say you need to get to that 1,000 rage, and in six seconds, you can get 880 rage exactly. If at some point in those six seconds, this triggers, actually, if at some point in the first five seconds, this triggers, then on the sixth second, you'll have a thousand rage and your skill will go off as opposed to waiting a whole nother second on top of more rage from other sources you've you've cut down your skill cycle by a full second if not more and with that i've rambled on long enough that is all of your blue talent trees these are honestly the ones that i feel people should be looking at the most because they these commanders determine what style of play that you will have. Skill trees are more offensive. Defense trees are more defensive. Field battle is exactly that. You're worried about uh, speed on the field. Support is support. It's pretty straightforward what they're supposed to do looking at these skill trees. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this information helps you in deciding uh, what heroes you should be using to try uh, as far as leader are concerned and hopefully understanding what the nodes do can help you decide what talents you should be picking for your builds with that this is mr brain your friendly neighborhood gaming dad signing off